Hello, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. My name is Anthony DeSimone, along with my good friend here. Hello, one and all. It's Daniel Geyser, back. He is back on this, his second edition of Penguins Points with me. Number two. And number two for him, number 14 overall. With that, let's jump in. Thoughts today, Dan? The oh Penguins. Boy. Yeah. What a game. They what a, what fell. a loss. Yep. Hey, what are you going to do? So, 4 2 loss to the Lightning today at home. Some of the four points we want to look at here well, today. Sloppy day for Zakoff. Dan, what looked, do you think? You saw the uh, highlights. Yeah, I just looked at the highlights and it looks like Jeffy didn't have the best day uh, in between the pipes. Uh, uh, it's kind of been the story of him for this season. You know, he, he's been inconsistent. I know he had a good game, what, a couple starts ago, but uh, yeah, yeah. it's tough when, you know, you don't have your number, when you were hoping to have your number one guy flower in there and he was obviously down with an illness. Not sure what's going on with him, but uh, it makes you wonder what it would have been like maybe if Flurry was behind the pipes and maybe it could have been a closer game for the Pens. Right, right. Another sad point today. The power play 0 for 4. Couldn't get Ouch. any production. Once again, they go hot and cold with hey, that. You got to keep it. Power play is so important. I cannot understate it. I mean, it's better from what it was at the beginning of the season when it was atrocious, but they're still struggling with this inconsistency. In a game like this, picture that. Imagine if they would have went 1 for 4. Maybe it would have been 4-3. Maybe they could have tied it eventually. See how that could change the course of the game. Right, right. Now on the on the upper hand, the penalty kill was 5-5. Five for five. They did good. not give up any power play goals, although the Lightning didn't really need them because they put up four anyway. Um, and on yeah. a other note to notice today, production from the bottom forwards. The only two go the two goals scored today, Tom Kunakel and Scott Wilson. I like we had that. no production in the goal department from our top forwards, it was all the bottom forwards today. Dan, what do you think about that? Uh, I like seeing the production from the guys on the lower end of the spectrum, but I think in order to win a successful game, you need both. You need the, the bottom guys to produce and the top, and when that right. happens, you will win games. And obviously, that's not what – you only got half of that equation today, in my opinion. Right, right. Well, speaking of top guys, Malkin is scheduled to be out know? at least another two more games with his injury. Was not sure. Day, yeah. I, I think that's where they're sticking him out. I'm not sure if it's um he keeps getting relapses in practice or it's whatnot. The knee, right? That knee of but, his. But um he is out for two more, so the Penguins will be without him. And Great. with that, uh oh, we jump down a little further. I guess Sullivan thinks he should change the lines apparently because Malkin's not back, <sighs> and he came up with this idea of putting Crosby and Kessel on the same line together. Uh, what do you think, Dan? I don't know. I mean, Sid was doing fine as it was. I mean, I understand he's probably trying to get Phil going, you know, Kessel there. But, uh, well, what did it do today? Nothing. I think it made, actually, the situation worse because Sid didn't score, neither did Kessel. So See, I think that here worked. what what went wrong with this idea, and, you know, we have to give it a couple games because we're still, you know, it's trial and error at this point. There's still a decent amount of hockey left, but well, you start after making solidified lines now. But... Today, what I saw was Kessel was slowed down because he didn't have Carl Hagelin. That's not to say Crosby's not fast. He but is. it's it's Kessel has been used to playing with Hagelin for a couple games now where they're starting to get a little bit of chemistry because those two on the ice at the same time together, my goodness, those are two of the fastest uh, wingers in the NHL right now. And yeah. they are dangerous when Malkin is on point at center, you know, helping them out get set up on plays. I just didn't feel the same speed was there with Crosby and Kessel today. Um, and I felt that kind of left Hagelin just kind of lost because he wasn't well, who with Who was his. he with? I honestly, um, I can't remember who they bumped on him. They were rotating so he, on the okay. second line. So he was just kind of looking like he was left out to dry there. Yeah. Um, I think out. I think if you really want to keep trying it, try it till Malkin comes back. But when Malkin comes back, you got to put those three back together on the second line and give Crosby and Kunitz – um, the first line and pick a guy for that third spot because Bo Bennett is still not back yet to take Crosby's and side. God knows when he'll be back. Just Who to knows? I mean, he's just been out every season. That's that's, that's you know something something Bo we're Bennett. not including in here, but something we're thinking maybe it's time to get rid of Bo Bennett because it's not to say he's a bad player, but he's very you injury can't rely prone. On him, I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't want to throw the guy under the bus, but it's just like every stink. Every time he gets hurt. Yeah, he starts out real well, he gets an injury, and then he's out for weeks on end. So I don't think, you know, at this point, if he it's can't not his get... Fault, but yeah, it's, if he can't get a healthy stint going here, then I think it's time we maybe part liability. ways. Right. Um, as for the last point here, goal production. Dan, I brought this up with you before the blog started. Six goals against the Anaheim yes. Ducks. The following that was incredible. That was great. 
Following three games, two goals. Dan, why do you think the Penguins struggle to be consistent in the goal department this season? Uh, well, like I said, I think it comes from that combination of not getting enough, you know, from your, your top guys and then your bottom guys and then, you know, the power play obviously being inconsistent. I think it's a multitude of factors. You know, they're, they're obviously trying to play hard in each of these games. You know, there was effort today, but... Uh, I, I don't think it nails down to one specific factor, but obviously guys like Kessel not scoring as much as we expected when you when you brought guys like him in and obviously missing a force like Gino, that's going to take a hit on the goal scoring department. Right, right. Uh, and it's, I, it's, go ahead. I think it's partially, or partially, partially because um, the power play is not consistent. You know, you go nights where they're really good. I think they had a couple power play yeah. goals in the Anaheim game. And then they put nothing up against, you know, of course, the New York Rangers was one of those three teams. That was, yeah. um, we're not going to get into that. We, for some reason, the, or not we, mm. the Penguins, for some reason, cannot mm. beat the Rangers. No, they have our number. I, I mean, it's just... It's, it's just that happens sometimes. I mean, it's just the they have struggled so hard with the Rangers the last couple seasons. But Rangers, they couldn't get anything going. They were shut out. Carolina, they got a 2-1 to one victory. The second goal technically doesn't count because mm-hmm. it's an overtime goal. So no one gets credit for it. That's why I only said two goals in three games. And then in the third game, they lost to Florida 2-1. to one, Another hard-fought game. But, I mean, there were chances where they could have had more goals in that game, and they just didn't produce. So right. they need to figure out a way to get consistent goal production, especially I mean, if they're going to try to make a run see, for the playoffs. It, I mean, they beat Detroit. What was it, 6-3? So yeah, right the there, week they before. Sh- they show you that you can't. They show that they can flex for six, you know, and first? then they can't do it yeah. again. It's almost like a one-and-done kind of deal. So, well, let's see how this affects the standings here. Dan, let's take a look here. You see Mr. Capital. Yeah, they're running wild, brother. 16 (laughs) points. They're actually currently playing at the time this blog is recording. The stats are as of 7 o'clock as we're recording this at 7.30 on a Saturday night. Um, Right. They have 88 points. The Rangers, Uh 16 points behind them there's a huge gap there obviously. they almost can just kind of put the brakes on honestly they say don't put the brakes on but they can honestly put the brakes on but if they the, wanted to they have a, a well cushioned safety net. so and plus they have the two game advantage but let's jump down atlantic divisions a little tighter the panthers still hold a five point lead over the lightning and bruins who have now jumped into the third spot in the atlantic they're they always have, up there they have thrown the red wings down into the seventh spot with 67 points, and the Penguins round out the last team in the playoffs for the Eastern Conference with 66. With that, Dan, let's look over here at the In the Hunt section. You see I added a 14th place as the Buffalo Sabres are creeping up in the hunt now. What do you think about that pack back there? Who do you think might emerge out and take a wild card spot? Uh, it's tough. I still, you know, I think the Devils, obviously, them being there. I mean, it's a toss-up. you got the Hurricanes. Uh, my money would still probably be on the Devils because they've all they've been in the mix. So right, you gotta get, right. you gotta go with that pick for me. For for me, I'm thinking two options here. I sadly, you know, I'd want to see the Sabers pull it together and make the playoffs. I know it won't happen at least but this year. They'll make it. I think they'll make a decent run at it, but won't be successful. My pick out of that group is if Carey Price can come back for the Canadians. Oh, yeah. Let's talk. I mean, look at how far. What has happened to Montreal? I, mean, hey, I know Price went down, and they've just been looking they've been, terrible. They've been awful. They I mean, they started out, I think it was 18, 18 they were on 6, and 4, and they were in the lead. They were ahead of the Capitals at the beginning of the season. And since yeah. then, it has just been nothing but downhill for the Canadians. They now find themselves in 12th That's place shocking. in the East. But I'm thinking... You know, if they can just get Carey Price back in net, you know, they say one man doesn't make a team, but, but for real him, honesty, he was the best goalie, what, in the league probably? He was if one of them. One he of... was up there with other with other net miners like Henrik Lundqvist. He was just such a such a factor on that team. And right. it has really been um, tough for them to play without Carey Price. And that's putting a lot of pressure on the other goaltender as well, that he's got to go in there and play every night. And he's only, you know, slated as a backup. Yeah. And they're expecting him to dress for all these games. That's tough on him, considering he only has a couple years under his belt. So, I'm hoping that Carey Price can get healthy and come back for the Canadians, because it won't feel like the playoffs if the Canadians aren't in it. Because they always make it interesting. They're a real tough hockey team, and I'm hoping that things work out well for them and they can make it in. So, 
But enough about the Canadians. Yeah, that's let's talk that's about the about. Penguins again here. <laughs> they have a game tomorrow, twelve thirty Sunday. Yes. Against It'll Buffalo. be against Buffalo Sabres. Their former head coach over there in Buffalo, Mr. Dan Bilesman, his first season with the Sabres. Let's go, Dan. 24, 28, and 7, under 500, 7th in the Atlantic, 14th in the wild card. Yes. What do you think uh, about uh, Bilesman's performance there in Buffalo? I think that you have him. He's a good coach. Uh, I just felt like he, he, you know, event, he, we had to get rid of him because he met his expiration date here. But I feel like with a club like Buffalo, uh, he can take you know the talent that they have there, uh, develop it, mature it, and I think eventually in the years to come you will see them as a contending playoff team. In my opinion, if you think that, how far, how many seasons do you think it'll take for Bowsman to get control? Uh, at the earliest, maybe we could start seeing that next year. You know, maybe we could see them finally make the playoffs after mm-hmm. a long while not being there, and then mm-hmm. progressively get better. Year, you know, right, depending on who they draft or what on. Right, right, right. Roster so, moves. And they're at the point of the season where they can either A, make the push for the playoffs, or B, they can sell out and get trades for next season. You know, that's the decision that Dan Bilesman is looking at. You know, do we either fight and try to make it into the wild card, or do we just, you know, cut our losses for this season, get prepared for next season, get in a good draft position, start making some trades at the deadline with other teams. All right. So that's where they're at. Because the trade deadline is coming up. Um So something to think about. If you're a Penguins fan, maybe the Penguins might make a move. Dan, you said they shouldn't. I agree. There's no need to. I mean, No, you're in eighth place. You know, that might not be exactly where you want, but you have to give the players on the team a chance to develop. Malkin will come back. He'll get healthy. You know, it'll it'll work out. Yeah, I think think if they make a change, it becomes more detrimental. Let's, we were talking before the uh, podcast, and you said we referred back to the series against Boston the year we picked up all those great players that were supposed to give us a cup. Murray and uh, Murray, Ginla Murray and... Morrow, Aginla, and we went into Boston and we scored two goals and got swept. Mm-hmm. You know, so it goes to show maybe if we didn't, you know, trade. make all those changes, kept the chemistry we had, things might have been different. But right. that's hindsight's twenty twenty. Right, right. So you'll never forget that day when we lost six to one, will you? Uh, never. That uh, was still hurts. That was a rough night. Yeah, I remember that one. But uh, let's jump over to the tips to win here, yes. Dan. Score first. It's simple. I mean, you look at today's game. I mean, if they would have gotten on the board first, who's to say we might have not gotten the other three goals or two goals that the, the Lightning were able to get. So it shows right. you how important that lead is. If you put yourself in the hole, then you got to dig yourself out of that hole. So. Right. Now, the Penguins are a good team to dig out of the holes. They're one of the better teams in the league in terms of coming back. But like you said, you don't want to be putting yourself in that position. And the Penguins of late have been doing that a lot. And, you know, it just makes could, it harder to yeah, win. It makes it harder to win. And, yeah, you can come back every once in a while and have great finishes like they did against Florida. Those are they, nice to see. Yeah, Not that but, I don't like to, but I don't know about I'd you. rather. Right. I'd like to have a lead in the third period, you know, with 10 minutes and play shutdown. And it helps you build on your confidence. Think right. of that. Oh, we got this. Okay. Right, right. We are that good. Right, right. Second tip, Dan, we both talked about this and we agree with it, the power play. State it enough. Power play, power play, power play. With with the with the talent that is on this team, with Latang at the point for defense, Crosby, Malkin when he comes back, Kessel, Haglin, Kunitz, there is well, no you reason you can't get a power Gino play. With Gino out, goal. the power play suffered because I think what they put Sid on the half wall where he really isn't at, at his best. I think moving Sid from where he really is good, I don't know where they had him at before, but I'm just saying, it's just with Gino going down, it's really affected the power play. Right, right. You can see the impact. Right, and the other thing to bring up is Mata. Mata has not been given a lot of point shots as he used to be when the power play was doing well because. When you would see Mata take that point shot, that is a wicked slap shot. And you put someone like Hornquist in front of the net that has had an art form with deflecting pucks into the net. Mm-hmm. They were successful. They haven't been doing that of late. They're starting to kind of creep back into their pass happy, methodical ways. And what it's mm-hmm. resulting in is teams throwing the puck down the other end 200 see, feet. We've seen that before. So, in the third point, you wanted this one on here. Phil Kessel, Dan, what do you got to say about him? He needs to do more. I mean, I'm sorry. The guy's getting paid a lot of money. He was expected to be, what, almost close to a 40-goal scorer at his peak. He's, what, at 18? He has 18 goals and 19 assists this season. We have, what, almost a month left, maybe a month and two weeks to go for the season. So, you'll be lucky if he gets to 25. Or maybe 30 if he really wants to try. I just feel like there's been a lack of effort there on some nights. I mean, you look at the game 
on Monday night versus um, the, the Panthers. I heard he was pretty much non-existent in that game. There's no excuse when guys like Malkin go down. You need guys like a Phil Kessel for the amount of money you're paying him to step up. Otherwise, why would you bring him here if he's not going to give you the type of effort and the type of production that we expect from a player of his caliber? Uh, I, I'm throwing this scenario out there. Think of, if instead of Phil Kessel, what if we got Brandon Saad instead? Brandon Saad, huh? I think that would have been a better yeah. trip. Just looking back on it, if we had the we we had the option to get Sods, but we got Kessel instead, I think Sod might have been a better fit than Kessel here. Just looking at it now. Right, right, and I think a lot of people are just excited with the oh. fact that Kessel's here in his first season and the way that he got traded here. And I think people aren't paying attention to the fact that he's really not, you know, producing as much as he was in Toronto. And some people claim. <sighs> Some people claim that to, to the fact that Toronto, no offense to any Toronto fans, Toronto sucks. Oh. And, <laughs> you know, they really didn't have anybody else that could score like the Penguins do. So there could be that to attribute to it. Um, you have something you want to chime in with on that one? <laughs> there was this, this, this person that called into the show that I listened to, and he said uh, the reason that Kessel's a struggling is because the Penguins – have better competition than the Maple Leafs have, even though they're all playing in the same NHL. <laughs> so there are people out there that claim this cra- I mean, that's just a, right, one, right. one guy that called him. But I'm just, I don't know. It's just like, I, people say stupid stuff like that. It just makes me want to rip my hair out. So, right, right. But oh, make excuses. I don't know. But the guy needs to do more, clearly. Right, right. That cannot be stated enough. Well, that's it for the Penguins. Dan, well, you know, gonna, when you come here, though, we always talk about Chicago, so here's your They corner. are. Let me have to introduce them. They are the reigning, defending, undisputed, three-time Stanley Cup champions of the world. There you go. All right. They currently <laughs> are 38, 18, and 5, 81 points. That places them first in Number the Central, one. first in the Western Conference, yeah. and second only behind the Washington Capitals yep. by seven points. It's expected of them. That's last the, yeah. last three games, let's go down them real quick here. Anaheim was an overtime loss. We still got a point. Hey, look at it that way. It was close. Toronto Maple Leafs, like we were just saying. Blah. Oh, Blah. my God. Total. That's what you expect to do against a, a team of Toronto. You just go in there and you manhandle them. Right. That's and, what they did. Right. And and contrary to what the Penguins can do. This was great. New York great Rangers. Great game. I watched that. Oh, man. What a comeback. You know. Wow. They. Were, I mean, it's incredible. I loved it. That was a fun game to watch. Stuck it through New York. <laughs> All right. And on the slate for tomorrow, Dan. Big is game. Against the Minnesota Wild. It is the, the struggling stadium. Minnesota Wild. Right, right. The stadium series game. Dan, what do you think? Is it going to be a fun one? Uh, I think it could be a good game. Uh, with Minnesota, they've fired their head coach, Mike Yo. Now they've won a couple games like, under their belt recently. And uh, there's playoff history between excuse me, Minnesota and Chicago. So I think it will be a fun game to watch on an exciting Sunday afternoon. Do you have a prediction for it? Uh, it's going to be Hawks. Uh, is it going to be like a 7-2 to two, mm. or is it going to be a little closer? 4-3. Four, 4-3, three. Four, three, you think? That's what I'm going with. Well, so we shall see. We'll, we'll keep you up to that. As for now, Dan, we're done. Thank you all for listening and watching. We appreciate it. Uh, make sure you guys tune in. If you haven't caught up on any other podcasts, feel free to listen to those. Don't forget the Penguins tomorrow, 1230 in Buffalo. Um, as for us, like I said, we're done. My name's Anthony DeSimone. His name's Dan Geiza. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and like the video. And Dan, any last thoughts? Uh, can I get a quick plug-in for my YouTube channel? Uh, it's youtube.com slash Daniel Geiza 412. Tomorrow night, want to plug this real quick. Uh, there will be two live Google Hangouts that I will be doing. The first will be at 6 p.m. It will be a tribute to the amazing, legendary career of Daniel Bryan, career retrospective. Uh, that will be at 6 p.m. Then, after WWE Fastlane, come join, uh, come on to my channel for the live Google Hangout at 11.30 p.m. After Fastlane, I will give my full thoughts and opinions on WWE Fastlane as we will be on the road to WrestleMania 32. So... Check out my channel if you're interested in all my thoughts on professional wrestling. Who would have thought you'd ever hear about hockey and wrestling in the same blog, huh? There you go. Alrighty, guys. Have a good evening. Thanks for listening in, and we'll catch you guys next time. Take care.